All right, I have to admit that my first Kirchhoff's Law video wasn't the best video ever, not least because I mispronounced his name. So let's see if we can do a better job this time. You don't pronounce it Kirchhoff, you pronounce it Kierkoff. Kierkoff came up with two laws for electricity. His first law is this. Total current entering a junction is exactly equal to the total current leaving it. Or in other words, current is conserved at junctions. And yes, you might think that that is pretty darn obvious, but it's a very useful law to think about. Doesn't matter how many wires you have going into and out of a junction, we can call all of the currents I1, I2, I3, I4, I5 in this case, and we know that we have two currents going in, so we can say I1 plus I2 has to be equal to I3 plus I4 plus I5. It's never gonna be that complicated though. But there are times when you have circuit diagrams and you might be stuck as to what to do next, especially when it comes to circuits that have branches in them. And so you might need to remember that actually the most obvious thing is that the current going into a junction is equal to the current going out. Kirchhoff's second law is this. In any closed loop network, the total EMF is equal to the sum of PD drops. And we know that to be true just from when it comes to looking at one cell or battery and one resistor. This is the simplest circuit that we can have. We have an EMF here and we have a voltage across here. We know that if this EMF is six volts, then the PD drop across this resistor must also be six volts. If we have two resistors in there, again, the total PD drops across both resistors must be six volts. Just be aware that when it comes to EMFs though, batteries and cells do push in a certain direction. So if all of these are three volt cells here, what is the total EMF of the circuit? Well, pushing this way, we have three volts. Pushing this way, we have three volts from the cell in the middle. But this one here is trying to push in the opposite direction. So therefore, actually, the total EMF is just three volts because these two cells are cancelling each other out, as it were. So therefore, the PD drop across this resistor also has to be three volts. Okay, let's have a look at a more complicated example of how Kirchhoff's second law can be used. In this case, we have two EMFs, but they're not in line with each other, as it were. They're part of this branching circuit, this parallel circuit. And so this is a very standard case of when we have to use Kirchhoff's second law. We're told the resistance of this resistor is 10 ohms, and we're told that this one is 30 ohms. Now, how many loops can you see in this situation? Well, here we have one loop here. Technically, that should be the other way around because current is flowing this way. We know that current is going to flow in this way and this way. Actually, uh, it's not always obvious which way currents are going to flow. So if you get given questions, generally, you will be shown which way the currents are flowing. OK, we have another loop here as well. It's just a closed loop. So there's one loop. We can literally just forget about that. We have to consider the circuit as a whole, but we can break it into just different loops. There's one loop. That's the cell and the resistor. And here's another loop cell and two resistors. But there is one more loop as well. It's like one of those puzzles. How many squares or triangles can you see? And we have one big loop as well. Now let's try and figure out what the PDs across these resistors are going to be. So at the minute, if we just look at this loop, it seems like we have a potential divider, don't we? Because we have this 12 volts and we have 10 and 30. So if this was just a loop by itself, then we would assume that the voltages would be nine and three. That's just your potential divider equation. But the problem is, is that that's not the only cell involved. We also have this one. And so we can't say that that 12 volts is being split between these two resistors according to their resistances. But there is one thing that we know to be true. And that is that we have one loop here where we have a 10 volt battery, fine cell, it doesn't matter, 10 volt EMF, and we have one resistor. We know, therefore, that due to Kirchhoff's second law, that because we have a 10 volt EMF, the PD drop across this resistor must be 10 volts. Now we can look at the second loop here. We have a 12 volt EMF and we have our two resistances, but we know that it has to be a 10 volt drop across this 30 ohm resistor. Therefore, now using our knowledge that potential has to be divided across two resistors like this, we know therefore that this has to be two volts. Let's consider the big loop, forgetting about the resistor in the middle. Here we have a 10 volt battery pushing this way, 12 volt battery pushing this way. So overall, the total EMF of this big loop is two volts. So therefore, if we're just concerned with this resistor at the top, it has to have a PD drop of two volts. And we've already seen that that is correct. 
You could then get asked a question like, what is the current through the 10 ohm resistor? Well, we're gonna use just V equals IR. I is V over R. But what is the V gonna be? Like we said, it's two volts. And we could figure that out either from these two loops or just the big loop. Divide that by the 10 ohms. And we have 0 0.2 amps. Tell you what, let's call that current there I2. Let's call this one I1. Let's call this one I3. Can we figure out what I1 is straight away? No, we can't because we have this branch here and we need to know I3 first. So let's find out I3. Here we have current flowing through this resistor. Do we have a voltage? Yes. Do we have a resistance? Yes. So therefore we can just do 10 divided by 30. And so that gives us 0 0.33 amps. Now we know that at this junction here, Kierkegaard's first law has to be satisfied. So we can see that I1 and I2 are going in and that has to be equal to I3 coming out. So therefore, if we wanna find this current here, the I1, we can say that's gonna be I3 take away I2. In other words, 0 0.33 take away 0 0.2. That gives us 0 0.13 amps. Now it gets complicated when we add in maybe a third resistor here. Let's call that 10 ohms as well. I'm not gonna do any calculations with it because it'll take a while and it's a little bit beyond A level. But the thing is, by adding this one resistor in, that changes the whole circuit. Again, this big loop here, we have a total EMF of two volts, but we can't say that it's just going to be one volt across each of these 10 ohm resistors. It doesn't work like that. But what we can say is that the PD across this resistor here is bound to decrease because that two volts now has to be shared somehow across these two. Looking at our first loop over here as well, we now know that this 10 volts has to be shared across the 10 ohm and the 30 ohm resistor. Again, we can't just split that up in a ratio three to one because it doesn't work that way. But we do know that the PD across this one is going to drop because yes, the 10 volts does need to be shared somehow across the 10 ohm and 30 ohm resistor. So there we go. That's a basic look at Kirchhoff's laws. Hope you found that helpful, at least more helpful than the last time. If you did, please leave a like. And if you have any suggestions on what I can do next or questions, then please leave them in a comment down below. I'll see you next time.